Here now is Faith to Live By with Pastor Barber. John in his first letter speaks to us of the origin of love. Beloved, let us love one another for love is from God and everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. The one who does not love does not know God for God is love. Jan and Lois join with me as we sing, Jesus, lover of my soul. Jesus, lover of my soul, let me to thy bosom The Bible has the answer. You have provided the questions and we search the Bible, God's holy inerrant word, in order to find the answers. Question number one, are languages a punishment from the Tower of Babel? This question really makes me smile because there are some people who have a tremendous facility in learning new languages and I am wonderfully or tremendously envious of them because the languages which I have studied, the learning has come with great difficulty. And I think that perhaps the person who is asking this question may be in the midst of learning another language and they're wondering if this is punishment. I would say that it is not punishment, but rather it is a merciful restraining, rather, a merciful restraining of the self-will of man. Go to Genesis chapter 11 and read again the first nine verses which tell us of the Tower of Babel and how that there was a shutting out of God. The judgment came 
in the flood of Noah, which immediately precedes this in the chapters before Genesis 11. Read those. And then there is Genesis 11, as people multiply on the face of the earth, and they come to the point of shutting God out and seeking to raise themselves up to the sky, to the very pinnacle of the sky, and to be united in that. And God, he divides the people. In Habakkuk chapter 3 and verse 2, in wrath remember mercy, the prophet pleads with God. In wrath remember mercy. I think that God was doing that very thing. His wrath had been poured out in the time of the flood, and here he was especially remembering mercy in restraining the people from utter foolishness, such as they had immersed themselves in at the Tower of Babel. Question number two. I see 666 in many places in combination with other numbers. Is this the mark of the beast? And the questioner is referring to phone numbers or identification numbers, such as on a student card, perhaps, or some uh, government document. Is this always the mark of the beast, 666, even though it may be hidden among a whole string of other numbers? I would take you to Revelation chapter 13, and have you read verses 11 down to 18, where the mark of the beast is especially indicated, and it comes in verse 18. Here is wisdom. Let him who has understanding calculate the number of the beast, for the number is that of a man. It's an earthly, it's a man number, and his number is 600 and 66. So there we have it that this symbolism, this symbolic number, that it is very specifically identified. Very often in, num in the numbers that we find in the Bible, seven is the number of perfection, 12 is the number of completion, six is the devil's number. However, we need to bear in mind that it is a part of our numbering system. What comes after five? It's the number six. What is two plus four? It's six. And so we need that number as a good and proper number. What comes in the sequence of 663, 664, 665, and then it's 666 and followed thereafter by other good numbers. So simply to have that number in a sequence is not automatically the mark of the beast or something that is evil. I take you to 1 John chapter 4 and verse 1. Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. And then in Matthew chapter 24, the Olivet Discourse, which Jesus gave, repeatedly he speaks of deception. I think that in our world and in our day, as we come to the end of the age, I believe that what Jesus is speaking of here most pointedly and repeatedly in Matthew 24 is being borne out in that people are being deceived sometimes for all the wrong reasons, for all the wrong purposes, and that Christians at times play the fool because they do not test the spirits and consider what is right and proper and what is the devil using to make us as foolish people. So be careful, be careful. Do not see the devil under every bush and under every tree. Indeed, he is at work in this world. But be cautious and test the spirits, even as 1 John chapter 4, verse 1 says we should do. 
thank you for these questions. If you have a question, send it to us and we will use it as quickly as we are able. Our mailing address is Faith to Live By, Box 426, Winnipeg, Manitoba, R3C2H6. Heidi, Terry, and Tim now come to sing My Savior, first of all, and that is followed by Tim and Terry singing, Heaven Came Down and Glory Filled My Soul. Speak. 
because of that wonderful day when at the cross I believe riches eternal and blessings supernal from his precious hand I received heaven came down and glory filled my soul filled my soul when at the cross the Savior For over 20 years, Jonathan Kavist has been the bass in our men's quartet and has also been a rich blessing through his solo work. Faith to Live By Resources is delighted to announce a new collection of 13 songs Jonathan has especially enjoyed singing and has himself chosen for this CD called Blessed Assurance. You will enjoy hearing Jonathan sing I'd Rather Have Jesus, In the Sweet By and By, Just a Whispered Prayer, I Need Thee Every Hour, Turn Your Eyes Upon Jesus, Leave Your Heavy Burden at the Cross, Something Beautiful, What a Friend We Have in Jesus, Written in Red, What a Day That Will Be, The Old Rugged Cross in both Russian and English, Someone is praying for you, and of course, the title song, Blessed Assurance. Ask for your free copy of Blessed Assurance when you write this week to Faith to Live By, Box 426, Winnipeg, Manitoba, R3C2H6. You may also call us toll free at 1 833 367 3852. Or you may also reach us through our website, which is faithtoliveby.ca. Our sincere prayer is that Faith to Live By resources, including this new CD, Blessed Assurance, would be a means of you growing in the grace and knowledge of our wonderful Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Have you received a copy of our beautiful scripture text calendar for 2022? For the coming year, we have selected readings from Paul's letter to the Romans to serve as a daily reminder of the goodness of God. This, combined with glorious scenery, will be a treasure in your home or office. Ask for your free calendar when you contact us this week. Matt Bowering now comes to sing, Oh, That Will Be Glory. and trials are o'er, and I am safe on that beautiful shore. Just to be near the dear Lord I adore, who will through the ages be glory for me. Oh, that will be
just to be there and to look on his face will through the ages be glory for me oh that will be Just a smile from my Savior, I know, will through the ages be glory for me. All oh, that will be glory for me, glory for me, glory for me, when by His grace I shall look on His face. That will be glory, be glory for me. In Luke chapter 1, we hear the angel Gabriel speaking to the Virgin Mary, saying, For nothing will be impossible with God. Luke chapter 1 tells us of two births that are foretold and both to women who are relatives, who are cousins of each other. We have Elizabeth, who is the wife of the aged Zacharias. They would be the father and mother of John the Baptist, the forerunner of the Messiah. But Gabriel, who had gone and spoken the promise to Zacharias, is then subsequently sent to Nazareth in the hill country of Galilee. And he is especially assigned to visit a virgin betrothed to her husband, but not yet wed to him. And that virgin was Mary. We read, in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city in, Na in Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the descendants of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And coming in, Gabriel said to her, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. We read that Zacharias, when he first saw Gabriel, was greatly frightened. Here also, Mary, she wonders at this statement being perplexed. And the angel says to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. You will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. Zacharias said, was told that the child that would be born of his wife was to be called John called gift of God. Here is also a name of great significance. God has given many gifts. He gave a wonderful gift to Zacharias and to Elizabeth. Here he gives a gift, and the name of the child, Jesus, means salvation. You shall call his name salvation. You shall call his name Jesus for he will save his people from their sins, we read elsewhere. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. All prophecies that had been given to David that he would have a kingdom that would be without end. And here is the great fulfillment of what God intended to do through the lineage of David more than a thousand years before this time, he will reign, Jesus will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and his kingdom will have no end. Now Mary, 
she asks a similar question to what Zacharias asked. Mary says, how can this be? I am a virgin. The angel answered, Gabriel answered and said to her, the Holy Spirit will come over you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. And for that reason, the Holy Child shall be called the Son of God. The Son of God came to become the Son of Man, entering into this world through the womb of a virgin to be Jesus, to be salvation for you and for me. And the angel Gabriel says to Mary, Mary, you wonder at these things, God has been doing even additional great things. Behold, your relative Elizabeth has also conceived a son in her old age, and she who was called barren is now in her sixth month. And here's the verse that I began with. For nothing, nothing will be impossible with God. And Mary she says to the angel, Gabriel, behold the bondservant of the Lord. I am the Lord's servant. May it be done to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. Nothing shall be impossible with the Lord, with God. Do you know that to be true? It is true. What God had promised centuries before that he would send Messiah into the world and that he would save his people from their sins. This is what Jesus came to do through the miraculous work of God. Would you praise him? Would you honor him? Would you, as Mary, say, behold the bondservant of the Lord and simply lay your life before him, adore, worship, and gladly serve him today? Thank you for joining Pastor Barber today. Please watch for Faith to Live By again next Sunday at this same time on this same station. Until then, Faith to Live By prays that the peace of God will fill your heart and that the joy of the Lord will be your strength. Pastor Barber would love to hear from you. The mailing address is Faith to Live By, Box 426, Winnipeg, Manitoba, R3C2H6. 